frankly speaking, uh, I would prefer to talk about cats, um, but um, I didn't know there is such an option, so I'm afraid I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about something else, something that I have thought about, and I would like to start with, um, uh, with a quotation uh, from a, an advertisement I saw once in, uh, in uh, the London Underground, and it said, philosophers needed. And of course, you can understand that it was meant to be uh, surprising, probably ironic, because uh, philosophers are usually not those that are particularly sought after by employers. Actually, recently, uh, a friend of mine and a colleague uh, uh, told me that she had um, uh, looked at uh, one of the internet uh, websites um, uh, uh, where uh, job uh, ads are placed and, and uh, the only thing she uh, could find under the section of culture was uh, female escorts. Uh, and uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm sure that at least, well, at least somebody in this room believes that uh, humanities and philosophy are not really useful but I would say uh, they are. And um, uh, rather, the problem I see is that there is certain kind of contradiction between uh, what um, uh, students, employers, different kind of authorities demand. Uh, uh, basically, they demand very straightforward and applicable skills. And uh, on the other hand, what humanities are willing to uh, provide and humanities are more interested in uh, influencing society and indiv individuals in uh, indirect, uh, sort of long-term way. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, quite often, uh, people from humanities react to this uh, accusation of being useless by sort of uh, trying to um, imagine uh, or uh, sort of uh, scare people with uh, uh, doomsday visions of, of uh, what the world will be like without uh, philosophy, history, and literature. And I would say this is a rather uh, impractical kind of uh, strategy because, I mean, if, if people are not really seriously scared about the possibility of uh, destruction of the planet Earth, it's very unlikely they will be scared about the collapse of philosophy. So I would say that the only way uh, uh, humanities can survive is by trying to combine uh, these two things, uh, ideals of humanities and uh, practical aspects of humanities. And there are practical aspects, of course there are. They are considered secondary, uh, but um, in, I think in this I don't know, situation that we live, in the society we live, there is no other way as to uh, focus and develop those aspects that uh, I would uh, con uh, consider um, uh, practical. And one of these aspects is content design. I missed one slide, uh, so this is the main question that I wanted to ask, but so I missed it, but it doesn't matter because the next uh, important thing is this content design, and uh, I wanted to illustrate what I mean by content design with uh, one example. And um, uh, uh, just recently, I looked in one of the news um, portals, and there was a list, a list of, uh, uh, of um, talented children who have died young. And uh, uh, in this list, there was uh, a Mexican singer, uh, Richie Valens, uh, who uh, died in an airplane crash. And there was um, an ex extraordinary uh, uh, child uh, artist, uh, Nadezhda, um, <laughs> Nadezhda with uh, some last name, who was, uh, uh, who, was um, who, uh, who died at the age of 17 uh, from a stroke. And then there was uh, the famous um, diarist of the Second World War, uh, who, uh, as you know, uh, died in the concentration camp. And this list was played, uh, placed in the section entertainment, uh, which was sort of surprising because, uh, I mean, there was nothing really uh, entertaining about this list. And so I asked myself, so why the list is there? And in fact, it was very simple. I mean, the section entertainment had a subsection 
that was called celebrities. And of course, in some sense, these uh, 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 children were ce celebrities. But it was, it was obvious in some way that this is a wrong uh, place for them. Actually, some time ago, in the same section of entertainment, there was an article about uh, the death of uh, ex-president's dog. Uh, which also, I would say, is uh, sort of less entertaining for me than uh, maybe for uh, editors of this, uh, of this um, uh, news portal. So what, uh, uh, what uh, one must um, keep in mind that, of course, these people have a difficult problem uh, that they have to solve every, every day. Namely, they have huge amounts of information that they have to somehow to present. And one of the basic ways uh, how to present it is uh, by uh, ordering, organizing it in, uh, according uh, to certain uh, kind of um, uh, categories. And uh, that, what I would say, is one way how content design works. So uh, b the basic idea of content design, what I call content design, is, I, th I would say, very simple. It's organizing complex content. Well, I came up with uh, a more uh, sort of elaborate, uh, uh, elaborate definition, but uh, the basic idea uh, remains. And notice, uh, the, the, the word, the idea, in a way, is uh, uh, nothing new. I mean, first of all, content design is a notion that is used by uh, programmers to describe certain kind of processes they do when they uh, uh, develop software. But I would like to use it in a wider sense. And in this sense, editors, um, uh, creative producers, curators are also uh, content designers because they uh, have to organize certain kind of content. Um, in a way, of course, we could say, well, why do we need uh, such a new uh, word uh, and sort of fancy kind of concept? Uh, but um, from my experience, um, uh, there is such a necess necessity. And so the, re the experience I would like to refer is um, uh, my work um, in, in a team that, uh, uh, that developed uh, a museum uh, in Gobustan in Azerbaijan. The basic idea was uh, that this is a museum of uh, prehistoric uh, rock art uh, that is discovered in this area and which is now a UNESCO World Her Heritage Site. Uh, and you know, uh, Azerbaijani government decided to replace the old museum with something uh, uh, newer. And so I was part of this uh, Latvian team that worked on it. And uh, th that was great experience. I mean, uh, I'm a philosopher, so I, I work mostly on my own. But uh, here I had this uh, team work experience that, uh, that was very interesting and exciting for me. But there was one problem that I uh, noticed. Nobody really understood uh, who I am in this team. So what is my uh, uh, function and what is the name to describe it? Because I was not really creating content but arranging it. Um, I was, I don't know, uh, formulating uh, what uh, will be in uh, each room, what kind of objects there will be in, uh, in uh, 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 I don't know, information uh, stands, what will be written, and, uh, and had to decide what, uh, uh, what species of stuffed animals we will, uh, we will have. And uh, so that was the moment when I uh, came to this um, notion of uh, concept design. And frankly speaking, uh, nobody really took it seriously. Uh, the reaction was something like, uh, well, okay, content design, uh, I mean, we'll think about it. But actually, I think that's the right word, the no right uh, notion to describe certain kind of um, uh, function that is very important and becoming more and more important uh, in the world that we live in. And uh, the, there are several reasons why, why this, um, why this um, uh, content design is important. Uh, I won't dwell on all three uh, aspects of it. Uh, basically, this is uh, one is that uh, we have huge amounts of information that we uh, don't have capacity and time uh, to, uh, to grasp. 
And so there must be some organization of this content, of this information. Second thing is that, of course, multimedia has destroyed uh, uh, borders between different kind of, uh, uh, not multimedia, but uh, so uh, t um, uh, electronic uh, technologies have destroyed this uh, border between different kind of uh, media. And uh, really, you can combine very freely and easily, I know, um, sound and pictures and moving pictures and uh, objects, uh, whatever you like. And again, this interaction between these different media are uh, important to manage. But I would like to stop a bit, on, uh, uh, to dwell on, uh, a bit on this collaboration aspect. Again, which is uh, very important, and we know uh, uh, that um, nowadays content is uh, pro uh, produced not by one person, but by many. Often is produced by many people together. And there is some great opportunities in it, but also some uh, difficulties. And one of the difficulties um, is what I called this Prostakvashina effect or buttermilk effect. Uh, uh, this is a reference to uh, a cartoon um, animate, animated film by uh, Soviet, um, uh, from Soviet times in 1970s about the boy called uh, uh, Uncle Fyodor and his cat and a dog. So I, after all, I had a cat in my presentation. Uh, so a uh, cat and a dog, and there was one scene where uh, uh, this boy is writing a letter to uh, his parents. And uh, something distracts him, and he leaves the letter unfinished on the table, and then the dog comes, uh, notices the letter, and writes something down, and then leaves, and then the cat comes, and again adds some more lines, and then parents uh, uh, get the letter, read it, and simply can't understand what's going on. I mean, uh, I think uh, some hair was falling out. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, they were really worried. So what's happening with their, with their boy? Unfortunately, that's often how uh, collaboration works. I mean, it's often how a content is produced, especially if we are talking about the uh, longer period of time when uh, sort of people uh, are replaced and so they sort of continue the work of the previous, I don't know, uh, content um, uh, creator. And uh, uh, the result is often very, uh, uh, um, I don't know, um, uh, contradictory, um, uh, ir sort of ir irrational, uh, 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 I don't know, web pages, uh, uh, texts, uh, uh, and um, uh, I don't know, eclectic exhibitions. And I would say that uh, here uh, we can see how content design could help uh, to do this. And notice, these are things that hu uh, people in humanities are very good at. They know how to analyze con uh, concepts. They know how to recognize structure of the text. They know how to create a coherent uh, story. And uh, one, of course, one thing that scares many uh, uh, well people from humanities is that by becoming um, uh, practical, they will make um, uh, this um, uh, uh, well, humanity is something like a tool for manipulation with people. And I, I, I agree that there is certain kind of um, um, uh, possibility of, of this. But still, I would say that uh, content design is not just about making, um, uh, making some content easy for consumption. It's uh, uh, more uh, about um, not being lost in the information, more about uh, getting what you want, what you need, more about making informed decisions. And in a way, uh, uh, it's about the art of uh, doing. Uh, thank you. Thank you.